it, it's no secret that when people talk about the connection they make with one another, they talk about chemistry, right? The chemistry that goes on. Because it's such an exciting subject. And when you start to understand it, you start to understand the beauty of it. You start to see this poetry. You start to see the soul of chemistry. Chemistry is really about all of matter. It's about the stuff that really matters to us. And so that's what makes it tangible. It, it's the stuff that we feel with our hands, and it's the stuff that, uh, that really matters, I think. And so as we go through and understand chemistry, I find so many analogies between the study of chemistry and what's happening in real life that just makes life easier for me. And so it's made my life easy. It's an exciting subject. And you get to blow things up and see fires and stuff like that too, so it's exciting. It's like every movie you've ever seen rolled into one. Chemistry is a challenging subject, and I think um, it's generally perceived that way by the public, um, and certainly by people who haven't taken chemistry. Um, there's a lot of reasons why the public perception of chemistry is not so positive in the beginning, um, because people equate chemistry with chemicals. And chemicals are the things that we work with, but chemicals have also gotten the public perception of being bad things, right? And so you see these ads, chemical free, right? Which is really a misnomer. It can't be chemical free. There'd be nothing in there except a vacuum, right? And so um, equating all the, all the bad chemicals, the ones that are toxic or are dangerous to the environment, with chemistry, I think leads to this perception that chemistry is not good, a negative perception. And then when students start to take it in university, they have to make a connection between what they see, their real world, you know, the macroscopic world, the things that we touch, things like this ring, for example, which is made up of, of some chemicals, and try to distill that down to the very basic atomic level, which is something that's very hard to relate to because nobody's really ever seen it. And it's making that connection between the macroscopic and the microscopic, I think, is where a lot of students perceive a lot of the difficulty. The reason why it's so hard to connect um, with that. And what we do when we teach chemistry is we try to make that connection for them. We try to show them that chemistry uh, at the macroscopic level is directly related to what we see at the microscopic level. We try to show them about the process that we go through in science, about how we know the evidence that we know about that mi microscopic world that we can't see very well, but still have a lot of evidence for. And as we do that, I think that can start to engage students a little bit better. Um, and that makes the subject a little bit easier to get through. Um, we do some not so good things in chemistry. I mean, we, we have teachers who will tell students, you know, look to the right, look to the left. One of you is going to be gone and fail this course uh, at the end. And I think a lot of professional schools use chemistry at university level as a weeder course. And I think students are smart enough to understand that. Um, they look for the performance, and so that makes it challenging as well. Students come in wanting to be doctors, wanting to be dentists, and they think that this is the big barrier that they have to pass, and so they kind of set up this barrier that they have to pass through. And I'd say to any student who has a teacher that tells them, look to your left and look to your right, one of you is going to be gone, challenge them on that. I mean, that's not true. That's not what a good teacher says. Teachers are supposed to be there to promote student success in every student. Okay, and so if you hear a teach, uh, teacher tell you that, just, just, just ignore, just challenge them on it. Just take them and say, look, this is not the way you're supposed to be teaching us. I have a right to understand chemistry. You're going to show me and guide me on this journey to understand chemistry. So getting past the microscopic world, getting past a lot of the perceptions that students have coming in um, about uh, chemistry being a weeder course are some of the things that uh, will make students a lot more successful in chemistry if they can. If you want to make chemistry your major, what it really takes is an openness. And this is really true of any, any, anything that you want to make your life's profession, your life's, your life's desire. You have to approach life in a curious way. You have to live a curious life. You have to live a meaningful life. And you have to live a life that um, has a purpose to it. And if you approach the things that you want to do in life in that perspective, you're going to be successful at whatever it is that you try to accomplish. And I think bottom line, that's true in chemistry. It's true in anything that you try to do in life. And so if you approach chemistry with that openness, that curiosity about the way things work, about how you're learning about things in a positive way, and not focus so much on grades and assessment, but just learning 
you're going to be successful. Some of the best students I've had have been the students who've been C plus, B minus students. Once you get them in the lab, if they're curious people, they are just gangbusters because they care about what they're doing. They have the purpose. They have the uh, meaning in their life that they get from the curiosity of learning, from just understanding things. And I think the, the only thing that I would offer for, for students is um, if you want to be successful in anything you do, live a life like that. And just live. I mean, live life every day. You can do just about anything you want. So I've had students uh, in chemistry who've gone on to pretty traditional bench chemist jobs with a bachelor's degree. They're actually practicing chemistry, whether it be in academia or in industry or in government labs. I've had students who go into education and be a high school teacher or a university or college teacher. I've had students who go into journalism and try to become a science writer or a science interviewer. Um, I've had students who go into um, forensics labs, and so they work with uh, police services, the RCMP, and try to look at chemical evidence. And anything that you're dealing with, um, something that's tangible, chemistry's got to be involved. And so you can do just about anything you want to do. You can become an independent consultant. You can become um, uh, a writer, a creative fiction writer that has a chemistry background. There's a lot of uh, increase in interest in that sort of area right now. Um, just about anything that you can think of. Find your, find, your, find your purpose, find your meaning, and whatever it is you do, and chemistry will be a part of it.